Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Ann Reardon and today at the top of the request list is red velvet cake. There are many variations on red velvet cake recipes and I'm going to share with you my recipe for it. When I was in New York last year, I did my own self-guided tour of bakeries and patisseries and if you're heading to New York, you can read about that on the blog. Every cupcake store that I went to said that red velvet cake was their best-selling cupcake. So that's what I purchased in between goodies from all the other stores. And the cupcakes range from tasting like a vanilla cake dyed red with buttercream icing on top, which was a bit disappointing, through to ones that had a rich cream cheese frosting and a, a beautifully but distinct flavoured cake. And that's what I want to recreate for you today. I've experimented using various recipes, some that use buttermilk and vinegar, and none of these gave that special flavour that I loved in New York. And I even tried making them with some red velvet emulsion that I bought, but when I've checked the ingredients, really it was just a bottle of red food colouring. And so then I discovered this key ingredient that gave the flavour that I was after, which is the Morello Sour Cherries. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the jar of cherries and strain the juice into a saucepan and you can use the cherries themselves in another dessert later. And then we want to concentrate the juice so that we can concentrate the flavour. So we're going to boil it, allowing the water to evaporate off until we're left with only half a cup or 125 mils. So if you pour it off and you've got too much, just put it back in the pan and boil it a bit more. Then leave that to cool completely. Measure out your flour and take out two tablespoons of the flour and add back in two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Pour that into a bowl with the sugar. Now all the ingredient quantities that you need for this recipe are listed on the website howtocookthat.net. There's a link in the description just below this video. Add in your baking powder, your salt and your gelatin. Now I'm using the gelatin in this recipe as an emulsifier, which what that does is it helps the oil and the water to mix together well. If you can't have gelatin, then you can leave it out, but I like the texture of the cupcake better with it in. Whisk those ingredients together. This is just the same as sieving it, so it's adding air and getting rid of any lumps. Then make a well in the centre. Separate your eggs into the yolks and whites. If you're new at doing this, then I suggest you use a new bowl for each egg white so that if you get a tiny bit of yolk in there, you haven't spoiled all the whites. You've only spoiled one. Even just a little bit of egg yolk is going to stop your egg whites whipping up, so you'll have to put that egg aside for something else and use another one. Add your yolks and your oil onto the flour mixture and then pour over the concentrated Morello cherry juice. Now don't mix this up, just put that bowl to one side. In a separate bowl, add your egg whites and your cream of tartar and whip up your egg whites until you get soft peaks that look just like this. Then using those same beaters, mix the other bowl of ingredients on low speed until they're just combined. Now if you want your cupcakes to be bright red like the ones at the shops, you have to add red colouring and stir that through gently. Next we want to fold our egg whites into our cake mixture and to do that we're going to do it in three batches. So add some of it in and use your spatula to fold going around underneath and back over the top, not just around the edges. Make sure you're going underneath and by doing it in three batches it allows us to keep the maximum amount of air into our mixture which will give us lighter and fluffier cupcakes. Using a soup ladle, pour some of your cupcake mixture into each case so that they are three quarters full. And once you've done that, place them in the oven for 11 minutes or until they just bounce back when you gently press them on top with your finger. Set those aside and allow them to cool completely before you frost them, otherwise it's going to melt the frosting, it's just going to slide off. You can make your cream cheese frosting using the video and recipe that I've already given you. I'll link to that in the description below and also annotate it here. Place it into a Ziploc bag and then reinforce the corner with some tape. Make one cut in the centre of the corner and then flatten the bag out so that the cuts you've just made are on the edge and make an identical cut in the middle. This will give you a nice pattern as your pipe. I'll just show you that again on an envelope so you can see what I was doing. So just one cut in the middle, turn it round and flatten it and one cut in the middle on the other side. Pipe generous swirls of your frosting onto each cupcake. Now my frosting is a little less sweet than the traditional cream cheese recipes, which is how I like it. And then you can just sprinkle the top of each one with a little bit of red sugar. And you're ready to eat these delicious red velvet cupcakes that taste just like the ones I had in New York City. 
Now, when you make some of these, make sure you post a picture up to Instagram and hashtag how to cook that or put it in the comments section on the blog. I love seeing what you guys make. And next week we have a dessert, then chocolate, then back to cake. So put your requests in the comments below. There has been some requests for a question and answer video. So if you have some questions you'd like me to answer, you can chuck those in the comments. Just put a Q&A with it so I know it's for the video. Thanks, and I'll see you all next week. Bye.